What's up, y'all? Your girl, so Kenny, and I'm back with another review. This is my review for the child. This is not Housewives. This is Summer House Martha's Vineyard. This is season two, episode six. Be sure to check us out tonight on the Whether You Like It or Not panel, the Summer House Martha's Vineyard edition, hosted by Busy Blue. It will be on the community tab. It's tonight at 8 15 Eastern Standard Time. Y'all already know the drill. Set y'all reminders. We will see y'all tonight. And um, I just want to give y'all a little insight, you know. This weekend was really good. I feel like the last two weekends that I've had have been really, really good. Um, but on Saturday, y'all already know Scotty by nature. He and I are friends. So anytime he comes into town, majority of the time when he comes into town, we see each other. So um, he invited me out on Saturday. And um, I got to be amongst some of the big YouTubers that y'all know and love, myself included. Um, I got to meet It's Rocks in person. She is the same way she is on her videos, you know, in person. So I love that. I got to meet Bondi Blue. Such a light, such a light. Very sweet. Again, a person who acts the same way in her videos as she does in person. Absolutely loved her energy. Um... Her best friend, Kima, was there. Hey, girl. Loved Kima, too. She was so sweet. And um, then I got met to another YouTuber that I wasn't familiar with, Black Witch Yaya. Y'all might know her if y'all are into uh, true crime and spiritual, um, you know, things. Then y'all would be interested in her content. Um, she's so pretty, so beautiful. I actually checked out one of her videos today as I was getting ready. She did one on Lake Lanier and you know how haunted that place is if you're familiar with it or if you live in Georgia. Child, I've never been and I have no intentions on ever going, okay? But yeah, she does those type of videos. So if you're interested in the spiritual realm and true crime, then she's the girl for you. But yes, I really had a good time with everybody. We had laughs, we had serious talk, there was advice. I love that. And just shout out to Scotty for, you know, inviting me out to these things. Because honestly, I wasn't going to go because I was just tired. Like I said, I my weekend started on Thursday and ended on Sunday. So I really had a long weekend. So I was like, child, listen, I'm tired. But I pushed through. I showed up and I'm really, really glad that I did because I got to be around some people who do the things that I do, you know, as far as YouTube. And just got to meet new people. And that's my thing. Like, I've always been an open person to meet new people and that's really what i'm focused on now because i just i be wanting new experiences child so i'm really happy that i pushed myself to go out this weekend but let's just go ahead and get into it hopefully you know i can meet some more youtubers along the way and things like that but let's go ahead and get into this review so it opens up with summer she's on the phone with her nana who was about to go and have surgery. So she's worried about her because her Nana is the glue to the family. She adopted her once she um, couldn't stay with her mom any longer. She's also in this journey of trying to find out who her dad is. We get a flashback of her trying to, um, or explaining to the group that she was trying to find out who her dad was. She got in contact with this man. Come to find out, he was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not your dad. And so her mom was like, I had a one night stand with somebody. So this man might be your dad. So she's having to start this process all over again. Um, but she said that she was having a lot of arguments with people in the house. This is what she's telling her her grandma and her nana saying, you know, you're there. You need to enjoy it. So Summer is saying in her confessional that she has abandonment issues because her mom, um, she had got taken away from her mom because her mom wasn't able to take care of her. And so because of that, she deals with a lot of emotionally unavailable people and she doesn't want to put all of her problems on them because she doesn't want to feel like a burden. But this is when you go to therapy, babes, okay? When you have these, when you have this awareness of where your issues stem from, that's when you go and get help so you can gain the tools to navigate through life and not go off on people unwarranted and project your issues on other people and everything else. Like, that's the issue that I have. I mean, do y'all be having health insurance? Like, what is it? Because my therapy sessions are only $15. And before then, I want to say they were like 30 a month. Because I just, like, you know, it's the new year, so I had gotten a new um, insurance. But my insurance was very affordable. And with every therapist that I've had, I've only had two therapists. But even then, like, I made a budget to go to therapy. 
Um, with my first therapist, I want to say my sessions were like a hundred dollars. I think, I think, no, 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 no. My, my, um, first therapist, my sessions were free actually. And then they went up, uh, I think like after a year, I think it was after a year or something. Then that's when I had to start paying. I don't know where I got a hundred dollars from, but yeah, bottom line, seek help when you know that there's an issue. Like, come on therapy. Everybody in this month, house need therapy. But uh, summer, yeah, you need to get on that immediately. On to the day's festivities. So there's a cocktail hour hosted by Preston. You know, just a little prelude to the Freak Meek event that they're supposed to have later on that night hosted by Jordan. So we're like, okay, I'm interested to see how this Freak Meek gonna go, child. But um, the couples are actually going to show up. So um, Preston's now fiance will be in attendance, child. Amir's uh, abusive girlfriend, Natalie, is going to be there along with Simon, who is about to pull up here shortly. So Jasmine is very excited because Mariah is going to be there and she wants the support of her friend. She said uh, last season was the first time in their 12-year friendship that they had any conflict, but you know they had to work to get back on board and now they're there. She wants her support from her friend. So she's really excited to see her. And I'm excited to see her as well. I can't wait till my girl pull up in the Sri Lanka. <laughs> Every time I hear that, that shit just, <laughs> it cracks me up. But anyway, child, um, you see Alex outside meditating. And every time he meditates in production, I always want to do this funny ass edit. But um, he goes to reach for Milo and Milo trying to bite him. I said, ah, oh, maybe your energy ain't right, Alex. Maybe you need to meditate a little bit longer. Now, Simon arrives in this flamingo pajama set. And I didn't even notice that that's what he had on until Nick pointed out in his confessional. Nick, I don't know what you done did different in your confessional. Okay, you looking good. As y'all know, I don't even know if y'all know that, but Nick is my favorite out of all the guys. Like, Preston is my favorite, but I do have an issue. Like, I have an issue with Preston because I feel like he never holds Jordan accountable. He can point out everybody else's issues, but never do we ever see him giving Jordan that same energy. And you don't have to be rah, rah, rah with her because that's your good sister. You really care about her, but I never see him holding her accountable. So, you know, Preston, love him down. I really do. That's just my only gripe that I have with him. Um, but out of like the straight men of the group, Nick has always been my favorite, even in last season and it's really because i love how vocal he was with the whole silas bs and how he was treating jasmine i love that i love that he was you know advocating for the women to really be on their own and not hovered by this hyper masculinity that silas was trying to put out there like bro relax these are grown women they know how to handle themselves they were functioning well without you regardless if jasmine was living in a car whatever she was still holding her own so skirt with all that extra overprotective bs that you really are trying to mask as control we don't want none of that so i've always been a stand for nick uh even though he has been you know a pretty trash boyfriend from the looks of it and um speaking of couples where's tasia is she not going to be in attendance because i have not heard him say now one thing about her so far but back to simon in these pajamas um, sir, we don't do that. I mean, listen, there are, there are some people who go outside with their pajamas on and I just don't understand it. But I also know that there are the silky two-piece sets that the girls dress up with a little heel and go out in. Now, I do like that. But Simon, that flamingo, that's definitely giving pajamas. You even heard Noelle saying, oh my gosh, and he got on flamingo pajamas. And then she was like, oh, I don't know if those are pajamas. Because <laughs> you don't know, you don't know. But sir, please put some clothes on. So, uh, 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 Preston's fiance gets there and it looked like him and Nick might have a close relationship because Nick was very excited to see him. I don't know. But, um, yeah, the couples are all there and Amir is going to get abusive Natalie. So everybody is gathered around having a little conversation and Bria is saying that Phil has arrived and so she wants to know if he can come to Preston's cocktail mixer. So she asked him, he was like, yeah, you know, as long as he stay in his place, then, then he's fine. Um, his 
fiance has a very very beautiful smile i was like okay they met on jacked in 2019 they getting ready to move in together and as we know present day they are engaged Preston popped the question and obviously the answer was yes so yeah shout out to donna with his pretty ass smile um so phil is allowed to come and uh we see that bria gets on the phone to let phil know this they're on facetime and he was like, okay, well, yeah, that's cool. And Bria was like, yeah, so now you can let Mariah know, you know, and you'll have somebody there. And so Phil was like, Mariah, I'm coming to the mixer. Mariah right there next to her or next to him. And you got Bria and her confessional talking about, this is awkward. Oh my gosh, girl, it's, it's you that's making it awkward because it's never that deep. And I want to know how deep this damn connection between Phil and Mariah is because it's definitely giving bestie. And child, I almost forgot to mention, Amir then went to pick up Natalie and they in the car and, you know, he being all lovey-dovey and shit. And she gonna say, mm, my handsome boy. Handsome boy? Are you his mama? Like, that, that gave so fake. Amir, she don't like you, baby. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because you on TV, but whatever it is, she ain't feeling you. So then, you know, the rest of the people at home were asking about her. Summer said that she really doesn't like, um, she really doesn't like Natalie because, or she don't know how did she feel. I don't know. I don't want to say like, but she said that Natalie was very standoffish when she met her, whereas Summer had a very warm and inviting energy. Now, of course, to the Brooke Ashley, shout out to my girl. She said that you wasn't that warm when she met you down at the, um, season premiere party. And I believe her because we see your stinking ass attitude on this show all the time. So maybe she was giving you what you give to other people. But I don't know, Summer. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, yeah, I just thought that was real weird that Natalie said that. And then you got um, Amir talking about Summer is very handsy. Don't try to paint this picture like the women just be after you in this house because, baby, they literally pay your ass dust. Jordan was never into you like that. You were the one chasing after her the whole time you had a girlfriend. So, Amir, please. And just back back to, you know, because my thoughts kind of go all over the place. But just back to that, like, handsome boy comment. That's the grown man. Amir is actually the youngest in the house. He's 27, so he's a baby of the group. I thought it might have been Bria, maybe Noel, but Bria and Noel, they're both 28. So they're not, you know, too far off. But, yeah, Amir is the baby. The grandma the baby. Um... But yeah, like that that boy comment. But maybe I'm reaching. I just ain't like that. So they arrive at the house, Amir and Natalie. And Summer is not thrilled to meet anybody new. You know, her and Jordan, they already have their feelings about Natalie. So Amir goes and knocks on the door to see if the girls were dressed so he can so he can introduce the two. But um Summer was like, We'll be out in a few. So, Summer goes straight downstairs once she leaves the room, and Amir catches Jordan and was like, hey, like, I wanted, you know, you to say hey to Natalie, and she was like, is Noelle downstairs? And went downstairs. Damn, y'all. I mean, it's one thing to, like, feel a type of way about somebody or have, like, these preconceived notions but, like, to totally avoid somebody, I don't know. It's weird. It's, it's, it's giving totally unnecessary. Like, feel the way that you feel about her. But you don't have to cause this hostile environment in the house. Because it's just really not needed. So then you have Amir in his confessional. And he was saying that Natalie knows that there were women in the house that were trying to get with him and then there were other people or other women in the house that he was actually trying to pursue so i did forget that shanice was the one that was actually into amir she was flashing him like you know showing her breasts on purpose but he wasn't taking the bait because he was actually into jordan who was not interested in him so he was like he just wants to reassure her that he is going to say what he say he was gonna do which is basically stay away from jordan but it's like you don't have a choice but to stay away from jordan because she does not like you like th there's no temptation there because it it has to be both ways and it's very one-sided what are you talking about and even he said that him and natalie's relationship is the most serious relationship that he had been in 
Oh, so I guess that explains why you was trying to chase after Jordan. Meanwhile, you had a whole girlfriend at the house. <sighs> Amir, you really starting to piss me off. So we get down to the cocktail mixer and everybody is all dressed up. I like Preston's look, but I'm sure he was hot because I said, isn't this the summertime? Okay. Out of the ladies, I feel like Summer and Noel probably had my favorite look. And it's probably because of the color. Like I love the pops of color that they had on. Uh, Shanice's dress was way too short. Girl, you can't even sit down good. You had, she had to stretch the hell out of that dress in order to make sure it was some material between her butt and the seat. I said, my goodness. Um, Amir gets there with Natalie. Jordan and she, they actually had a nice exchange, you know, talked about how they both was wearing brown. Jordan, keep that wig that you had on in rotation. It's the one with the bang. Listen, if you are not a girly who know how to lay a wig and, and glue the lace down, get you a bang wig, okay? It's going to be your best friend. Um, Speaking of that, the girls' leave outs are struggling and holding on for dear life. Jasmine and Bria no i know like next season y'all better have some fucking braids in y'all head because the the hair is unacceptable it's really pissing me off but phil and my girl mariah they make an entrance and i was just so excited to see mariah because we've all been anticipating this moment sis came serving body okay and giving us a little body in the hair i said see this is what y'all need if y'all gonna go and get y'all some hair Follow suit with Mariah. Do what she did, okay? Because the rest of these songs is not it. And even then, my mom, which is hilarious, y'all. I was talking to my mom the other day. And Bria's hair was the topic of discussion. My mama said that Bria be wearing one bundle in her head. Mind you, my mom is not a hair girl. My mom got locks and had locks for years. So she's never been one to like, you know get bundles or anything of that sort for her to be talking about it so when she said she got one bundle in her head i hollered because she does bria's head especially in her confessionals be looking real thin now this new confessional that she had in this episode with the blue the bundles was full and my mom caught that out too and said my you a trick <laughs> girl when did you get real versed in uh bundles but yes the density was definitely there in the new confessional but that shit had me so weak Anyway, um, yes, Mariah is there, and I'm happy to see my girl. Now, when Phil became the topic of discussion in Nick's confessional, he was like he only seen Phil one time, but Nick is somebody who travels around the world. He's been to the Kentucky Derby. He's been to Tokyo. He's been to South Africa. He's been to all these places. So, you know, being in a public space with Phil is nothing to him. I said... Now, Nick, that comment that you made, and I don't even think I'm wording it 100%, but the comment that you made, Nick, one, it gave slightly pressed. Two, it kind of gave off a tinge of elitist. Like, you know, we don't, we're, we're not the same. And y'all aren't the same. I mean, that's obvious, but you didn't need to stay. Love you down, but you didn't. Amir, you really, you really tap dancing on my nerves because... Mariah goes and, you know, hugs him. And they did have a text message exchange when all that stuff went down on season one because Amir is the reason why Bria and Mariah got into it about Milo's clothes because Amir was the one who actually mixed up the clothes. So he didn't admit that until Mariah had already got sent home. Mariah wanted Amir to apologize to her publicly did I say publicly? I don't know. I felt like I said it weird. But yeah, wanted a public apology from Amir. And he feels like he doesn't have to apologize. Because Mariah got sent home because she put her hands on Bria. Did y'all not go back and watch season one to see what actually went down? It was just a, a, a little shove of her placing the clothes on her chest. So... What What is y'all's definition? Because it seemed like y'all are really amplifying this situation, but no one is really bringing up the whole summer situation. Nonetheless, Amir, you need to apologize because what the fuck? That's you taking a lack of accountability. 
you started it. Had you not just put the clothes in there or had you, had you just admitted that that's what it is. Had you just admitted in the moment and actually spoke up about it, none of that would have transpired the way that it did. But you sat back and you watched everything unravel and waited until she got sent home to say something. That shit is whack as fuck. Then I got into real estate. Apparently, Amir does real estate and so does Natalie. Natalie sells over $2 million homes and what she makes in a month is what Amir makes in a year because he does, re uh, not retail, he does real estate for, you know, us regular folk. I said, oh, okay. Bria and Mariah, they have their conversation. Um, we learned that Mariah is actually allergic to dogs. So that's the reason why she went off the way that she did. Bria confirmed that she had said that previously. So yes, she had every reason to be, you know, responsive in the way that she was, but Bria also mentioned the fact that Amir was the one who started all of this and could have, you know, avoided all of this between the two of them. So it seemed like the conversation really went well. And, you know, they were willing to move forward because apparently Mariah had apologized numerous times prior. So it's just like if she has apologized numerous times, according to you, Bria, then why the fuck is it such an issue? Like, I don't understand. It's, it's not clicking something like is the producers in your ear telling you to behave this way because i don't get it and i'm sure the rest of the viewers don't get it as well so the girls are just ready to have a good time okay and they squash the beef bria saying in her confessional which she looks good bria you've been eating up these new confessional looks girl i like it um but she was saying she's a very forgiving person as long as she feels like the apology is honest then she's good to go. But I feel like you should have kept that same energy when the question was presented to you on whether or not Mariah could be around the group or come to the house. So again, this all just seems very performative. This whole reaction that Bria was uh, giving or just trying to see what she can get away with because she has that brat mentality. Like I just don't really understand. But whatever, the girls are moving on. So Jordan is ready to leave um, because she has to prep for the Freak Meek event. And she said that she has no words to say to Phil because after the show wrapped, he still messaged her on Twitter and on Instagram or whatever, asking, are you still mad at me, LOL? And she was like, baby, if we beefing, then we beefing forever. So she ain't got shit to say to him. And it is what it is. So then you have Phil who pulls all the men to the side and he wants to apologize for the way that he behaved. And Amir was like, you know, I'm not really one to deal with bullies. And Phil was like, you know, tequila is expensive and he wanted to come in basically lit. And Nick is like, skirt, I'm not here for them excuses. Like, no. I mean, I'm honestly with Nick, but let me not jump ahead. So Amir is like, you know, we think it's thieves around here. Okay, these my boys. So I'm always going to protect them. And you got Phil like over talking him, talking about tequila or whatever. I was like, uh, what's going on? So I was glad that Amir was like, you gonna let me finish? Like, I was not done talking. So Amir said what he said. But just even with the apology, I felt like it seemed more genuine when he was speaking with Preston versus how he was when he spoke to the rest of the men. I don't really understand but I was with Nick when it came down to, you know, you know, you have a book report that you need to do, but you want to wait to the last minute to do so. And the presentation is bad. That's what Phil gave. And I was like, yeah, because what is this? It just really seemed like, I don't know if he was nervous, but it, it just wasn't a good apology. And it seemed like he was putting the blame on him being drunk. And it just wasn't enough for me. I don't know. But Nick said he's fine without seeing him ever again, child. I don't blame you because I was here for the apology that he gave Preston. But the way that he presented to the group, it just did not land for me. But I also want to say this. Even if he did give a very sincere apology, I feel like Phil just does not fit this group. So I don't see him coming to be a part of the cast. I just don't. Okay, so we're getting down to this freak me party. Jordan, girl, you look good. I love this wig. Look, I've always wanted to try the mushroom 27 piece cut, but I just have it. I don't know, but Jordan looks really, really good. She ate this look up. Mariah ate down too. I said, come on, girls. Okay, y'all are giving ghetto rich auntie, and I love that. Um, who else outfit I love? 
Noelle's outfit was cute. I love that. Um, wait, because Amir was upstairs getting ready, right? And everybody is downstairs having a good time. And you hear his girlfriend saying, I do not want to be a part of that. Or I do not need to be a part of that. Sorry. You mean people having a good time? Because if you was going to be a stick in the mud, then you should have stayed at home. Don't try to make it seem like everybody enjoying themselves is an issue. This is why, this why they don't fool with you. This this is it. This is it. But um, Nick came downstairs. And he done transformed. Y'all, I didn't even realize that he had on fake tattoos. I don't know why, but like, he was literally giving plies from the shoddy video. Like... Nick, what's going on? And then even Jordan was saying that he looked good in his confessional. I was cracking up when Noel was like, that ain't Nick, that's Nick Avelli. But when Jordan was saying that he looked good, she was to go say his name. But instead of saying Nick, she said Lick. Girl. Not you want to lick on Nick. <laughs> but baby, Nick, hey. <laughs> So Jordan gives everybody a little background history on Freak Meek and you know how it was a spring break type of situation where the kids of Atlanta wasn't able to go down to the beach. So, you know, in comes Freak Meek. If anybody knows the history behind it, then y'all know. I know, but I just don't feel like explaining all of that. So, you know, uh, Jordan is taking over and she's doing her DJing, which I was waiting to see. Unfortunately, we won't be able to hear that because of copyright purposes. But, yeah, so she's in her element and everybody seems to be having a good time. I said, this is the type of events that we need around here, okay? Because typically it's just them and not anybody else. No locals, no friends, no nothing. So this is the type of event that I would love to see. So everybody is, you know, shaking ass and everything else. And you see Natalie, like, awkwardly interacting. Like, girl, you don't gotta be awkward. You can just, you know... Get your little two-step in your snap. That's all you need. Drink in your hand. Snap in your finger. Feet, well, side to side. That's all you need. Hey, hit a little A occasionally. Hey, hey, hey. Once you catch the B, you, you might be able to do a little, ah, 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 you know, just trying to help her out because she is looking like a damn fish out of water. Natalie might want to take some tips from Simon because Simon and his non-dancing ass is always in the mood to party, okay? He gonna blend in wherever he at even though he the only white man in the group. Y'all seen him um popping on a handstand on the counter? So what are you doing? Get them damn feet off the counter immediately. You and your curly afro about to get escorted out. He was already jumping in the pool last season and here he is again putting his dirty ass feet on the counter. We don't do that around here. This is a black household, sir. No. But yeah, you might want to uh, bring Natalie into the fold because she having a hard time blending in. So the girls are gushing over Nick in this transformation. I really love the fact that everybody was in character, in theme. Like, this is what I like to see. So I was eating this whole thing up. Um, so yes, everybody is all over Nick and his tats. You know, they acting like groupies and everything else. Shanice want a piece of the pie, baby. She's like, listen, I'm fucking Nick tonight. She said it twice. And when they played the preview from last week, I said that was Shanice who said that. It definitely was. I would not be surprised if her and her broken ankle tried to sneak into Nick's room for sleep support. Girl, no. Because Tasia is supposed to be there the next day. Uh, but girl, you might want to come now. You might want to get on that flight now because they trying to fuck your man. And the way that he was acting season one, he just might let him. They're in the jacuzzi. Playing never have I ever. Mind you, Donald, Simon's fiance, Simon, Preston's fiance is on the couch, knocked out, farting and snoring. I said, oh my gosh, child, they trying to get him off the couch. He don't want to move. So... Everybody's outside playing Never Have I Ever. And Noelle's question was, Never Have I Ever Sucked Pink. And so everybody was like, girl, what? You never sucked before? And Noelle was clearly playing the game wrong. And I don't fault her because when it comes down to Never Have I Ever, I always forget. Are you supposed to put your finger down if you, you put your finger down if you've done it, right? 
Yeah, if you've done it, you put your hand your hand down. Okay, yeah. So I get confused when it comes down to playing the game, and she did too. So they like, that's not how you play. That's not how you play. Like, they trying to get her on the right track. But it seems like Summer is really mad about the rules of the game. I really don't understand what's going on because it seemed like she was possibly getting mad at, oh, I need to claim this. Hold on, y'all. But it seems like she was possibly getting mad at Noelle for not playing the game correctly. But her energy shifted towards Bria. Because Bria was like, you scared. And it looked like she was just, you know, talking about she was scared to play the game. That's what I gathered from it. But I don't know. Um, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Somebody must be trying to take this. Look like somebody trying to do this at the same time. That's why I can't stand this. Who is this? Let me go back. Hold on, y'all. Because I'm trying to... We ain't, it's so slow at work today. It's crazy. Okay, well, ain't nobody taking it. I'm about to put my name on it. It's fair game. It's fair game. In progress. It's me. It's me. Look, I just took it from my coworker. Now, let me go claim it somewhere else, too. Because it's mine, baby. I don't want to hear nobody talking about I ain't been doing no work. Because there ain't no work. This literally, it's 11 o'clock right now. In the morning. And I'm just now getting work. And I clocked in at 8. That's just how slow it is. But, yeah, I just don't have time for nobody to be coming after me. Anywho, yeah, it seemed like Summer had all her... Uh, attention set on Bria out of nowhere because Bria was like you scared and it seemed like Bria was saying you scared to answer the question I could be wrong I'm not sure but that's just what I got from it either way Summer's energy was way off as it always is and she started getting extremely hostile and aggressive looked like she was trying to throw her drink on Bria and I don't really understand what all of this is for now According to Summer, her confessional, she thought that Bria said something rude. Okay, instead of asking, you go and try to throw a drink on her and act like you fucking storming off for the umpteen time this season. Summer, we're tired. And then, all of a sudden, Summer's back into the jacuzzi and her and Bria are squashing their issues. And then she goes and tells Bria, I would never throw a drink on you, baby. You're insane. I don't even want to put stuff like that out there. But the way your yo, yo moves change, girl, what's going on? I, I just can't. It just always seems like something is wrong with her. And I don't know. I don't know who, who's worse, Summer or Jordan. But um, they both go from here to the extremes. Summer, seek help. But that um bikini that she had on with the shells, now that's cute as fuck. They go in the house. And everybody is winding down. You see the guests are leaving. And so they're all in Shanice's bed. Because you know Shanice is on bed rest pretty much with that ankle. What candy girl now? What did you want to watch what happens live for? But anyway, um, they go in the house. Actually, I skipped the part. I'm glad I seen Alex on there. Because Mariah and Alex are in the kitchen. Alex is washing his hands in the sink. And Summer asked him, why are you washing your hands in the sink? We got four bathrooms upstairs. Girl, whose mother are you? Please calm down. And I know there's people who are very finicky about stuff like that. To me, it's not a big deal because when it comes down to cleaning dishes and everything else, the sink going to get cleaned out either way. But it's just like, girl, what? Alex said in his confessional, one of the things that he really liked about Summer last year was the fact that she was very lucid, very, you know, bubbly, friendly, and he ain't seeing none of that this season. Right. So the girls are up in Shanice's room. It's Noelle and Bria. Noelle got this uh, wig on that Shanice had on last episode. And, you know, they joking around, they laughing, they having a good time. So Summer comes upstairs and she was like, why are y'all leaving me out of everything? Bria's like, girl, could you just cuss me out at the pool? Summer was like, okay, well, I apologize to you seven times. Like, what do you want from me? And Noelle was like, girl, I ain't even gonna lie. It was definitely giving, girl, what's going on? It was feisty. 
And Bria was like, yeah, like, I just didn't understand. And Summer is like, well, I already told you. I, I apologized. It was probably because I was drinking. Like, what do y'all want from me? So as Bria and Summer are having this conversation, Shanice and Noel, they're joking around, taking pictures with Noel with this wig on, and they're laughing. And so while she's laughing, Summer gives her this death stare, gets up, and walks out. So Noel is going into pleading mode with Summer. Like, Summer, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, no, please, I was just, you know, I was, I was, I had the wig on. Like, I was joking about the wig. I wasn't laughing at you. So then Summer says that it wasn't Noelle that she was mad at. And uh, she was like, go ahead and make your friends. Like, why do you keep doing this to Noelle? You brought her in this group to obviously, you know, mingle and have a good time with everybody. And then she's doing that. And then you're getting mad. You, this is like, what, the second time, maybe even the third time where she has made Noelle feel bad for something that's going on with her. Even last week when she went off on Bria and, you know, she should have told Noelle that she made Alex blah, 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 and all this other stuff. You made Noelle feel bad to where she had to apologize to you. And I don't really understand why she was even apologizing, but... Like, you keep putting Noelle in these awkward situations, and I don't like that. Um, she just is a very unhappy person, and it's very hard for her to hide. But, Noelle, you have to understand that that's her problem. By the way, Noelle, you were serving body in that bikini. Like, okay. So, Bria and Summer, they go off to another room, and they're just trying to, you know, figure things out. But, Noelle, she chases after them because she's trying to check the temperature between her and Summer because she doesn't really know what's going on. So, Summer feels like the relationship between Bria, Shanice, and Noel is very lighthearted in all these things. Whereas her friendship with Preston and Jordan is just very heavy because Preston just lost his dad. Jordan's going through her alopecia battle. There's just a lot of stuff going on in her life too that she doesn't want to share because she doesn't want to be a burden on anybody. And she's saying all of this in her confessional, but she also mentioned, you know, um, her relationship with Preston and Jordan to Bria. And Bria was like, I mean, you feel some type of way about our friendship, but y'all leave me out of a lot of stuff. Like, y'all hang around all the time. And Summer is like, trust me, you don't want that friendship. Okay. Well, girl, tell us how you really feel. But yeah, back to her confessional, she just really feels like, she has a lot going on and she don't know how to deal with it. Okay. I understand that, but you have to stop putting your issues out on other people. If you really want to make friendships, this is not the way to go. They're not going to want to get close to you knowing that you're taking everything out on them that's going on in your personal life. That's not how friendships work. And it also just makes me go back to the uh friendship that she says she has with Shanice she said that she can never dig deep with Shanice but it seems like you don't even want to open up to your friends to show a vulnerable side so it's like how open are you like how can you expect this from Shanice but it seems like you're not willing to be open and honest about what's really going on in your life because what we've seen from Shanice the party girl the one who always wants to have a, a good time we've seen a few vulnerable sides of her this season because she's going through a lot in her life and she's vocalized that whereas you have not instead you're going off on everybody we don't see that from Shanice you might want to take a, a page from her book because this attitude that you got on right now nobody's gonna want to hang with you Summer bitch you might need to be checked into a mental asylum because what's happening I was recommending therapy, but it's giving padded walls and a, a strapped down white jacket. Cause girl, I don't understand. So they all go back to some uh to Shanice's room. Oh, come on, Glow. Y'all see me? Yeah, Glow. Anyway, they all go back to Shanice's room and they're trying to hash things out. So Summer is like, I had already apologized to you, Bria, and you know, like I just don't really understand why I got brought back up. And Bria's like, it's okay. Like, I'm not mad at you. And she was like, are you really though? Because it feels like you are. And so Bria is just kind of like shutting down at this point. Like she doesn't even want to go back and forth. She was like, I'm going to just keep my mouth shut. So this causes Summer to get upset to the point where she's like enraged. And Noelle is trying to, you know, 
gain her composure, like help her gain composure. And she's trying to prevent her from leaving. Now, granted, Shanice is telling her to, you know, get off of me. So then she ends up pushing Noel. She opens the door and then she goes back to Bri and was like, are you happy? I pushed her. You dumped. So then she storms off and then she comes back and was like, this is why your man don't F with you. You dumb bitch. And then goes back downstairs. Whole time Noel is chasing her, trying to calm her down. Summer is like pacing back and forth through the kitchen in the dining room. Girl, what is all of this for? And then she's telling Noel, you see, you see. Girl, what's going on? Like I said, you can't get mad that Noelle is, you know, building friendships with everybody. You can't get mad because you feel isolated. Imagine how Jasmine feels. Okay, you want to talk about isolation? Don't forget you was a part of the icy crew. And Jasmine is the one who brought you into the group. So don't don't get to talking about icing out or feeling some type of way because people are leaving you out of something. Because I don't see none of y'all really checking on Jasmine throughout this whole thing. Now, surprisingly, we've seen a little friendly interaction between her and Jordan while all of this was going down. But, uh, Summer, please, we don't want to hear that shit. So, yeah, she's downstairs and she's enraged and she's pushing boxes and everything else. Meanwhile, Shanice and Bria are upstairs and they hear all the commotion going on. And so they was like, close the door, close the door, close the door. Because they feel like Shanice going to come, I mean, Summer going to come up there and whoop the <laughs> And whoop Bria ass. <laughs> that was hilarious, but... No, in all seriousness, Summer, this year, you're definitely the the issue in the house. Yes, Jordan has been quiet. She's also had her moments of, you know, exhaustingness. But sis, I think that you're wearing the crown at this point because what the fuck is going on? Y'all literally had a good time. This was one of the best, the best event that y'all have had thus far. And you go and ruin the night with your bullshit. Girl, listen. I understand you trying to find your dad, your nana, got to do surgery. You still hung up on Alex. You jealous that Noel is being well received in the house. You mad because the friendship that you want with Preston and Jordan is not what you really getting out of it. Like, girl, you mad at everybody but your damn self. Please get the hell on. Don't bring Summer back next season because we don't need this type of energy. This is supposed to be fun. And look at her ass showing her ass but anyway they love us on a cliffhanger to be continued let's get down in the comments and talk y'all let me know what y'all thought about this video along with the or yeah along with the episode um don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel also be sure to check us out again on the whether you like it or not panel the summer house about this vineyard edition at 8 15 eastern standard time tonight all right bye y'all